Welcome back to the Nutramedical Report. And we have Kim Alexander. Tim, there's a number of stories we're watching. I just uh, spoke to my son, Stephen. He mentioned the other day that there was a real big dispute in Japan, between South Korea and Japan over two islands, where the Japanese are trying to get not only fishing rights, but mineral rights in the uh, in the area of the 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 sea off of South Korea. These islands, by the way, have been owned for thousands of years by the South Koreans. We also have China with the Asia conference where things have not been resolved. And the Russians, now Obama has had kind of a hissy fit, which fits his personality. He's not going to meet Putin in St. Petersburg. Uh, what else is going on? Uh, well, uh, the the big story yesterday, uh, a major site uh, on the Internet, Veterans Today, uh, supported uh, what I said last week, and that is uh, the strike last week uh, on Syria uh, at the city of Quasimun, Q-A-S-Y-O-N. Yeah, uh, the, the, the strike on the city, you mean with uh, those uh, tactical uh, nukes is what you're saying? Yeah, that it, was a, that it was a tactical nuke. There were actually two large explosives, but one was massive. Um, and um, clearly the massive one was a tactical nuke. The other was probably a uh, a, a very large ground-penetrating conventional weapon. Um, they, this is probably the third time now, the second or third time, that the Israelis have used tactical nukes on Syria. Uh, there was a strike... Uh, uh, and Homs, uh, well, what was it, a couple months ago at night. And uh, clearly uh, it was a, a tactical nuke. There was lightning in the sky from the, the uh, explosion, which is uh, an indication that it was a nuclear weapon going off. And right. the size and uh, just a, a host of things. Now, what the Syrians did not, in either case, Announced that they had uh, been subject to a nuclear attack. No, they're not going to. They're not going to respond to it. Uh, they're not even going to report in the news that it was a tactical nuke, because they know the consequences of uh, right. Israel is trying to bait them into a into a suicidal attack on Israel. Right. Exactly. And uh, Russia, China have not uh, said anything yet because if they do, they know that uh, it ties their hands in terms of their ability to respond to it. But uh, the well, it's a stalemate right now because if if what? Israel or America or NATO decides to do an, an actual attack on Syria, those ships are going to the bottom of the Mediterranean in minutes. They're well, going to the bottom. Not, but, yeah, but uh, yeah, they're the, going to the bottom. Our Navy, by the way, it's all parked there. Might as well say goodbye to your relatives because if we start a war there, they're going to die in the Mediterranean because the weapons that the Russians have given the Syrians and the weapons that are in the S-400 system on the Russian ships will devastate our Navy. It won't survive. And the problem is our Navy experts have told us that. In fact, we just read a report a few months ago here from a naval expert from San Diego. The, the fact is that we're sitting there, our policy of Obama, and the guy has never been in the military, he's an idiot. Any military general would not do what he's doing. Uh, he's, he's playing with the wrong side. Even the Saudis pulled the plug on the, uh, the, the Muslim terrorists in, with Morsi. And now our American government is now pushing to say we should release Morsi from prison and say he should have something to do with the government there. Excuse me, this is not rational, is it? No, no, and in fact, uh, less than a week ago, there was a horrific slaughter, a massacre, uh, probably the biggest massacre of the 21st century so far uh, in Syria. The foreign-based mercenaries attacked uh, a Kurdish uh, village. They killed something like 500 and some people. Uh, about 300 were women and children. Wow. Uh, split their throats, cut their heads off, machine gunned them, uh, the, the, the whole bit. And uh, the Russians are pushing for the U.N. Security Council to condemn it. Uh, naturally, America, which shall pay for it, is ignoring it. Uh, you won't hear about it in the mainstream news media. It didn't happen. They're only, uh, you know, they're only Kurds. They're only Arabs. They're only... Uh, uh, well, the Kurds aren't Arabs, by the way. The Kurds are not yeah, Arabs. I know, I know. The Kurds, the Kurds are the Kurds are like the the Caucasians, like the like the Iranians. 
and people misuse it. Same with Egyptians; they're not Arabs either. They're Egyptians. They're a different, yeah. you know, subracial group. They're, they're not Arabs. children of God. Right. They're God's creation, and to go in and slaughter hundreds of women and children, I mean, that is beyond despicable. Yeah. Uh, any men that do something like that are well, well, we, just... We, we support them, and Obama, even the, the Saudi Arabians couldn't stomach doing this because they knew it was suicidal, and yet Obama for four months kept on pushing this, including John Kerry, and they, the crazy maniacs in the military decided that they're not going to pull a plug. I don't understand why our military doesn't have more guts to decide to take Zip tie Obama, haul him off to a military tribunal, grab a hold of John Kerry and these other idiots. Because if they start a nuclear war in the Middle East, the first thing is the Strait of Hormuz will close, the Russians will down our navy, we'll see the state of Israel, no matter how many weapons they have, will cease to exist. Anybody who's not in a bunker will die, even if they kill every Muslim within 10,000 miles with millions of kilotons of nuclear force uh, on all these cities around them. The Earth will plunge into a nuclear winter, and people think, that's not Armageddon? Let me tell you, we're, we're pushing the envelope way too far. This is just not rational, is it? No, uh, it's uh, the... Actually, I will give Obama uh, an ounce of credit. I think he is more rational than many of the people that are absolutely dancing to Bibi Netanyahu's song. Uh, I, I, now, I said ounce of credit. Uh, certainly not. Uh, ounce, that's about it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, a shot a very glass small full. ounce. Yeah, well, right. the, yeah. The, the, the actual, the reason why, this is one of the reasons why Obama actually is in trouble with the globalists. Because, believe it or not, as evil as Obama is, he knows how stupid suicidal this is, and, uh, and believe it or not, he's resisting them on that front. And, uh, yeah, yeah, and, 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 and the, the guns of war will be... Should, are, we should support him to that extent, right. and that almost gags me to say it. But anyway, but, but actually, uh, it's one of the few situations where Obama, believe it or not, is head of the curve. Uh, the guys like McCain, we call Bomb Bomb Moran McCain. He's, a, he's an idiot. He he will destroy the human race. McCain sank, almost sank his own aircraft carrier because he was showing off and doing a hot takeoff, and he managed to flame a bunch of missiles uh, on the the deck uh, of the carrier next to his plane and set him off and they and he damn near sank his own aircraft carrier when he was in navy and if his father and grandfather hadn't been four star admirals he would have been in the brig yeah or uh, yeah exactly and and most of the people that were in the POW camp with him do not like him at all and uh, anyway uh, but the we, we <laughs> The, the globalist and Netanyahu are demonic in nature. They're following a, a line that is not rational under uh, uh, human thinking uh, in, in terms of human interest. It will kill the human race. And... Um, you know they 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 they're just nuts and uh, as bad as obama is and believe me he is bad, bad. Uh, obama at least as they has say that the song gut, uh, bad bad to the bone you know that's bad song. to the bone but you know he doesn't want to die and uh, no, no, well none of that remember now that everybody has a red line in the sand even obama yeah you know uh, even obama and well uh, uh, we, look our own our own generals and admirals are telling him don't do this don't do this, Mr. President. Don't let them get you into the Third World War. The Third World War with 21st century weapons of mass destruction. That's where I have to strongly disagree with these so-called hawk Republicans and hawk Democrats. And by the way, there's hawks in both parties. Uh, we, we've got some really, you know, like, you know, Dianne Feinstein, uh, this national security uh, ranking senator, and these other characters. They well, she's one of have, Israel's best senators. Yeah, they, they want to have a great big damn war. And you know what? I don't want my sons to die. In it. I don't want to have a nuclear war. I don't want to have a nuclear winter. I kind of like the climate the way it is. <laughs>
throw some uh, news out there, uh, Tim, and you had major articles because I got a bunch that I pulled up here on, on my little scan through some of the hot is uh, called the, the burning coal items of the moment. On uh, uh, on now Thursday, the eighth of August, twenty thirteen. Uh, I call it. if you don't have triskaidekaphobia, this is not the year for you. Yeah, let, let me run through a couple of articles. I'll, I'll throw some out there. First one, okay. I've got members, staff will keep health care subsidies under Obamacare. And I get a kick out of the look of this one, uh, Nancy Pelosi. She is like a stun bunny. It's just amazing. She's got this look like you got to pass the bill so you can know what's in it. It's like she thinks that we're crazy idiots. And then, of course, they're going to keep this. Uh, I don't know. Maybe uh, we are. We allow someone like that to sit in our Congress. Maybe we are. I know. I think the public is. Uh, under the current system, the government covers most of the cost of health care premiums for members of their staff and their, and their staffers. But an amendment by the Affordable Care Act proposed by Iowa Republican Senator Chuck Grassley threw those subsidies into question, saying that members and staff must enter into the exchanges or be covered by insurance created by law. In other words, uh, why don't we have all the congressmen, if they think it's so great, Obamacare, do it too. Uh, that'll solve a lot of problems. Well, uh, U.S. Congress see, with, they're congressmen and senators. They're above us. You see? Yes, they're class one people, just like the latest, of course, is, is Schumer. This is really obscene, actually. Senator Chuck Schumer, Democrat in New York, a member of the Senate Gang of Eight, told CNN on Wednesday that he thinks the host GOP plan to approach immigration reforms through piecemeal legislation is acceptable since the bills will simply be combined in conference. Uh, here's what they need to do, and I'm going to make it real simple. You can have a 10-page bill. Drop the damn fee so it's affordable. Shorten the line so people can actually uh, be, uh, file to become American citizens. You can't hire somebody who's a picker of fruit to spend three months in wages to try to apply to a line, and if they have a misdemeanor, they get deported. So we've got a situation where we've got an out-of-control immigration system that doesn't work, and they think by throwing another bill in and more regulations is going to fix it. I think not. And I think what they need to do is streamline it, cut all the fees out, add more staff. And by the way, they don't need to make a DMZ like they have between East and West Germany. They simply need to have a guest worker program that works. And people want to return to their country because uh, they want to return to their country. And if they want to become Americans, they've got to learn English and go through the proper process, but have reasonable fees, and you don't let criminals move to this country. It's just crazy. You mean like all the Mexican gangs that have been flooding in? Well, not just gangs. We've got people that are actually from Nicaragua and Guatemala that serve one or two terms in the military, and they come up here and become gang lords in Los Angeles and Orange County. So I see it all the time. It's just obscene, and it, and we don't address this. We have, we think we can kind of make a little bill that's going to fix things, and the real issue is how, uh, that they need to hire more staff, they need to cut fees, and they need to make the immigration system work. The well, immigration we, system we already has a law. We, they don't need to create new laws. They just need to have the staff and have policies and get rid of these fees. Why would we have a... Uh, people who want to apply legally to become Americans should have to pay a reasonable fee, not have to have a lawyer well, uh, yeah, and all yeah, these other look, things. We, we don't do most things reasonably and, a, anymore. That's p one of the big problems. Right. Uh, if you will look at the clothes that you have on, what are there they are, chances are they were made overseas. And I, I tell people, if you really want to know why this country is in a deep uh, recession, depression, why things are really deeply screwed up, go to your average shopping mall and go through it and, and and take a little inventory, look at everything made, and see what percent is made in America. It's going to be right. well under 5%. Now, right. 20 years ago, it would have been 80 to 90% was made in America. Yeah, 30 years ago, reverse, it would though, have been 95-plus percent. It, it's going to reverse for three reasons. The first reason is that the wage increases and demands in China are killing off that market. Number two, they're not playing ball with the West. So that the companies are moving their business to places like India, and there's a race to the bottom, which is why the rupee got devalued 20% this week, because they tried to devalue it to keep competitive with China and right. other countries. What's going to happen is we're going to have a swing to the right. You're going to see probably a Republican takeover of the Congress, the Senate, and hopefully the presidency. But what they need to do is put Glass-Steagall back in and tariffs so they build American factories back home. Not only that, of it's course. also... Of but that yeah, makes that's simple. sense. They knew then, what was going to happen have when they eliminated Glass Siegel. They right. and we had tariffs for 200 years in this country because they made sense. Uh, 
right. Ross Perot, well, the, when he ran for president, and I stood in the rain handing out literature on Election Day for him, he said, uh, when NAFTA is passed, the giant sucking sound you will hear will be American jobs leaving this country. And well, guess what? Is, he no, was right. No. Well, here's another aspect, and people wonder why the Mexicans are coming up here. When they put NAFTA in, they don't realize it didn't just destroy jobs here. It destroyed the jobs in Mexico. The independent businesses in Mexico went bankrupt because of NAFTA. They were moved not just by transnational corporations out of Mexico. They were moved to India, to Indonesia, to China, out of Mexico. There's a flow back now because the cost of energy and, and for factories are now being rebuilt in Mexico. But they got a major disaster over the last 25 years because sure. of NAFTA. I call it the nasty agreement. But, but now, of course, the, if we stand back even further... And well, that's why a lot of them had to come up here to work the because they, they were going bankrupt and the people who didn't have jobs because NAFTA... I call nasty agreement, forced <laughs> Mexicans to come to America to actually find work to pay to, to put food on the table to their families. So the globalism literally created the immigration crisis. Okay, These people, uh, if they could be in their in village in Mexico, do you think they want to be in, in America or do you think they, they want well, to be this in... Is in what, but look, this is what they've done in Europe. Uh, the official Greek unemployment rate as of May, which is the latest uh, figures, which were just out uh, late yesterday today, 27.6%. Now, that's the official. The real unemployment rate is probably pushing 50%. Now, they still have people trying to get into Greece for jobs, people from North Africa. There's a little island uh, that's part of Greece that they, a lot of these people end up going into because their rickety boats can't make it all the way to Greece. And... I mean, they just have a flood of people trying to get into Greece, trying to get into Italy, trying to get into Spain. And these, these countries are in, just, they're going under. And they're going under because of what the globalists have done to them, the global well, banking uh, cartel. Well, the same thing goes on with attack on pension funds. It's bailing in. And again, you see Obama saying things like uh, he wants to get rid of Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, which is a Ron Paul policy. But he doesn't want to put in Glass-Steagall, and if you do that without Glass-Steagall, it'll blow up the, uh, the the mortgage market and the housing market. They know well, this. You this really is not, have this to is... wonder exactly who put uh, Obama in, who he really well, is, who his I call him and daddy really president. are. He, he should have a hard hat on with a map of the United States and a wrecking ball on it. It says, well, you know, he's doing I'm a here, pretty good job uh, without the map. I, I'm, uh, I'm here to blow you out of everything you can. And well, I guess he may, he's a different kind of Islamic terrorist because he's Muslim, right? So he, <laughs> I'm so. not sure he's Muslim. I'm not sure what no, he, he is. No, I'm sure he's Muslim. He was raised in a, in a madras in Indonesia. He said on a, on a comedy thing a, a week or so ago, he said when somebody's commenting about his gray hair, and I guess he's 51 now, he says, I'm not the vigorous young Muslim uh, social activist I used to be. That's his statement. Did he really say that? Yeah. Yeah, you gotta. Is the same most powerful thing in the universe? It, it, it kind of gags like, me, but <laughs> yeah, like the, the most powerful thing in the universe is a thing called quotation marks. <laughs> As it says in the Bible, let the words of your tongue, the most powerful muscle in your body, condemn you. And he did it. He did it, as they say. Back in a moment. protection and what we're going to talk about next with Chris Harris. Uh, Chris, uh, you know, as much as I would like to hear that there's something positive happening in Fukushima Daiichi, n you know, nobody, like I use the joke, uh, I call the New Jersey joke of nobody knows nothing and nobody is doing nothing. We have, uh, now they build a seawall, the radiation level now is backing up, almost like a backing up toilet, and the entire site of Fukushima Daiichi, which is a nuclear waste depot now, a disaster site is now bubbling with radioactive plutonium 239, cesium 134, other radioisotopes, and they're and basically it's now even not even serviceable. Nobody can even physically go in there to do anything. So the situation is deteriorating as we speak. 500 tons of new radioactive material every day, and it's an aqueous release. And you mentioned, if you look at the maps, the level of radiation hitting places like Southern California is virtually little. We hardly ever get rain. It's aqueous. It's water that's going in the oceanic currents. And that's why it carries the currents trans-equatorially to the southern hemisphere. So when they think smugly that they're not going to get it, the radiation levels along the coast of South America are actually higher than here. 
uh, tell us about that, uh, Chris, because this is important people grasp that the entire world ocean currents, it takes about two years if a shearwater gull is sitting in these ocean currents to literally circumnavigate the planet so the transoceanic currents. These are giant seagulls that literally sit out in the ocean and kind of, you know, little ride waves and these oceanic currents all over the planet. So they can be sitting off Fukushima and two years later they're sitting off of Johannesburg, South Africa or in the Indian Ocean. Uh, people need a grasp that this is poisoning the entire planet. This is not a good thing. And it's aqueous. It's oceanic current flow that's bringing most of this radiation. It's primarily ocean, not airborne. And, and uh, this is something we discussed last week, and, and actually for years now that this would be an aqueous release. If, I guess by now every, all your listeners have heard the news breaking that. TEPCO has finally admitted that there are tons, hundreds of tons of contaminated seawater leaving, or actually water entering the sea. Well, why? Because uh, the contour of, of the Fukushima area is that it's at the bottom of, uh, of an aquifer, and where, where it all leads into the ocean. So anything that, that comes down, we're basically at the bottom of the hill, right before it hits, hits the ocean. So all the underground water and the streams and the aquifers all flood into the Fukushima site. They get contaminated, and that's why I was pretty uh, uh, set on saying you've got to cover the plant up. I didn't even realize back then that it was that the underground currents were so so vast, basically rivers. It's all flowing into Fukushima, picking up the uh, picking up the residue of the radionuclides and going out oh, yeah. to the ocean and. And, and, yeah, those, and, you know, this, this is what's happening. And trans-equatorial, and there's also not only there's three levels of current. We've got tropospheric air spread. The radiation levels were spiking for about 68 weeks, around 90 to 105, 110. And that went back down to two times background for about six weeks ago. It just spiked up yesterday and today now over 80 counts per minute. And we're not in the main pipeline of radiation. The main airborne area is heading toward Washington and Oregon. But the oceanic currents of the Kuroshi, which splits, heads north toward Alaska, south along the California coast, and goes all the way down to South America along, you know, uh, Argentina, Chile. Uh, and most people realize that these currents, that's why they saw surges in radiation along the the eastern coast of Australia last year with a major surge in radiation because these transoceanic uh, jet stream currents can carry up to 300 miles per hour levels of radiation. The water flow is 300 times the water flow of the Amazon River. And so when people think there is no trans-equatorial contamination, I just moved to the southern hemisphere to Patagonia, they're nuts. Uh, it's not going to be that way, and the problem is that we're not just poisoning the Pacific Ocean to turn it into the Plutonium Sea. This is a natural disaster that's the greatest extinction-level event that's in ongoing, and nobody, Obama, the United Nations, the International Atomic Energy Commission, TEPCO, General Electric, nobody is doing a thing, and what they do do is stupid. They should be converting the radioactive waste to solid and then disposing of it instead of creating more water that they have no place to store it, and the storage tanks are leaking. And we have now hydrovolcanic venting uh, and these criticality reactions and increasing the levels of tritium in the underground water slows neutrons and increases the chances of a nuclear explosion. So they're turning this into a bomb is what they're doing. They're turning the entire site into a lava lamp, lamp nuclear criticality bomb. That's not good. Well, there are sporadic criticalities, as evidenced by, by some of the nuclides that are coming out. The ones that they, and, the, and one, there's even more, the ones that they don't test for, you know, would be really indicative of it. So, uh, and I'd like to see a neutron streaming uh, uh, map, but of course they're not going to test for that because if you don't want to know well, the you, answer, you, you, by you golly, can actually fly an aircraft over with what's called a neutron camera. And uh, sure. they, they actually do that. They actually have what's called beta cameras. They fly over every city to look for beta emitters to see if somebody's storing nuclear waste or nuclear materials or getting ready with a nuclear bomb they're going to blow off as a container size or suitcase nuke. Over every city in the Western world, they do it every week. They also have satellite-based imaging technology to look for torsion field images of isotopes from space, and they actually fly aircraft over the hot spots. They show up on those maps. I know because they had kilo of security clearance. And this is what we do. The problem is you can go down to one kilo up to 440 meters below ground. The problem is a real issue, which is to Fukushima. There's more radioisotopes now in the ground than all the nuclear weapons ever exploded, multiplied by 10,000 times. This is mind-boggling. There's, there's so much radioisotopes there, it could blow up thousands of Earths. Yes, guys, but you know what? All those plants haven't melted down yet. 
and no, the fuel is, yeah. storage pools mostly are still fairly contained. They're not going to be for much longer. So well, the what problem they need to be doing that you have right well, now, which they're saying could last for 30 years at its current level of 300 tons of, of highly radioactive water flowing in the Pacific a day, this level could get much worse. Well, what they need to do is they need to put boronated water in there and turn it into a giant crystal, turn it into a solid radioactive waste, isolate these areas of criticality rather than amplifying the chances of a nuclear explosion, and they need an aquarium catcher to catch these things so it doesn't go, go to China, which is not very far away. We can't say go to China because it's in Japan, right? It would be go to the opposite side of the world, <laughs> which is not going to do, but it's a, it's a, it's a metaphor. Uh, the Fukushima situation is a good example of purposeful mismanagement. The reason why it's Agenda 21, it's population reduction, it's a form of genetic uh, abortion of the Japanese population, which is already disappearing, at its current rate of, of, of population replenishing of 1.1 child per family, the Japanese are literally going extinct. In Japan, it's estimated that about 100 to 120 years, there will be no Japanese left. Yeah, but that doesn't take into account Fukushima. Pardon me. The main, the main damage control TEPCO did was was that was before that was before in Fukushima. You know, now that's a, now that's accelerated, and what's going on? And I just talked to a lady just yesterday doing a consult who got a thyroid nodule. The rate of strokes caused by radioisotopes in Fukushima has increased 3,500 percent in northern Japan. And a lot of people don't realize after Chernobyl, many men were dying in their 20s and late 20s, early 20s, early 30s of stroke and heart attack caused by radioisotope-induced endothelial damage and heart attack and stroke and vascular disease. So people aren't going to live long enough to get cancer uh, unless they have a rapidly evolving one. They're going to die of other illnesses first. Immune system failure, super infections, vascular disease, stroke, heart attack, deep vein thrombosis, other things will kill them long before they live long enough to get cancer. And that's not just a that's no joke. That's happening now. It's been estimated that in America... Since two and a half years, 20,000 Americans have died prematurely caused by Fukushima. That doesn't include preemie babies where the fatality rate went up 42% in ICNs across America. Within six weeks, the rate of death in intensive care nurseries went up 42%. This the is amazing no joke. thing is you don't get those figures from mainstream news media, do you? Well, you get, I call them lame brain news media. They don't want to bring yeah. them up because these are published studies, by the way, by actual doctors and scientists. They're just kind of looking at the cold, hard facts and just using statistics to analyze and say, my, 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 since Fukushima, look at all these numbers changing. And what changed? Fukushima oh. changed. Now, what, 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 what's happening is people can do things they can get the pure water system water they can take neutrotrella they can start taking neutral defense uh our nutraceuticals they can take neutriodine to block radioidine 131 so they don't get mitochondrial failure they can start getting ready for the airborne plagues because as the population's immune system herd immunity drops these emergent super plagues after the Hajj in september october and the emergence of h7n9 which is replicating this is from chinese and american and british scientists the virus is replicating 80,000 times faster than any other known flu virus in history. Welcome back, and um, you know, we have solutions for the problem. Uh, if you look at our radiation protection protocol, if you look at a pro protocol for protection against the flu, I mentioned H7N9. Um, now, here's the short list again. If you're listening, government, if you're listening, TEPCO, General Electric, this is what you need to do. Number one, you need to convert the liquid waste to solid radioactive waste. That technology already exists. Number two, you need to bring in cabled or radiation-proof robots like the IEEE Prom, chip Atmel robots for deep space exploration, which I know NASA has, part of what's called Tier 1 science. Number three, you need a corium catcher to catch the corium and know where the hell it is with radiation detection using aircraft or drones that fly over that actually measure neutron flux. That's why you can see at night neutron beams literally coming out of Fukushima Daiichi. When it hits nitrogen over the site up to 20, 30 miles, you'll see blue beams literally shooting up into the sky. Those are actually uh, the oxidation of nitrogen caused by neutron flux beams that are firing off from the, the uh, radiation depot there. Uh, we also need to have beta detectors that are flown over by drones over so we can map them, ground penetrating radar, etc. 
we need to have not just a seawall. These idiots put a seawall up, but then they knew where was the water going to go. Well, it flows over the top of the well, the wall, and makes the entire ground saturated, like a uh, front yard in Houston. Have you ever gone down to Houston or along the uh, Baytown area? You walk on the lawn; it's like walking on a sponge full of water. It's like what? The whole place is so radioactive you can't walk around. These people uh, take stupidity to an Olympic level. And uh, the problem is we need to put it, it to actually fix it, it's going to cost not billions, but trillions of dollars. And uh, it's not just a problem in TEPCO, by the way. If we have major earthquakes, volcanoes, or extreme weather, we're sitting on at least one third of the nuclear reactors in America are within a strike zone, say in the, along the Madrid fault system, Diablo Canyon. Uh, reactor that's sitting up uh, in Northern California. All these reactors are sitting on or near fault lines in the strike zone or extreme weather or could be flooded where they lose backdrop power systems and the same system is because things going on. Most people don't realize Switzerland is very geotectonically active so the Swiss were smart enough to actually schedule, although it's slow, to shut down all five of their reactors. Well their schedule is really really slow but they realized if they have a major earthquake, they're going to major release, and their entire little country will become radioactive. So we got a problem, and we also all of these sites are perfect sites for terrorism. If well, you want yeah, to really yeah. cause trouble, you take an APC or an aircraft or a drone, and you just fly the sucker into one of these storage depots in any of these sites. I mentioned this to uh, the, the senior ranking senator back uh, right after 9-11, that I was one of the doctors taking care of, uh, after uh, Royal Dutch Shell was taking care of the website, the, the site over at Rocky Flats, and I said, "Look, all of this stuff is sitting on concrete pads, including radioactive liquid plutonium, etc., as the waste. If you wanted to hit it, all you need to do is, is buy under twenty thousand dollars an APC or fly an aircraft in there, even a, a fixed wing, regular small aircraft like a Cessna, and you could blow the hell out of the place and make the Western United States radioactive just by normal airflow." So, you know, we're, we're just asking for it. And I want to mention something else Jerry mentioned. Every one of our embassies worldwide is security is provided by the host country. So we have a token Marine inside the building, one or two or whatever. You know, no wonder they had to close the embassies. When they reopen them, they should have fired all of these foreign people in any Muslim country. We should have Americans, American military running and protecting inside those walls. They should be armed to the teeth with serious teeth, and I'm talking about military backup, so that nobody would, in their right mind would dare breach the walls of our embassy. This is craziness. So we have a foreign policy in Muslim countries where we tolerate foreign security forces supposedly protecting our embassy. What the hell are we doing? I, I think, by the way, uh, in, in Fukushima's case, uh, guys, I think... Uh, uh, Temco, uh, it's it's way way beyond them, and uh, whether it costs a trillion or whatever, it's now a global problem. It's a problem for all countries to step up to the plate and do something about it. Uh, of course, nobody. They don't, seems we don't want to window do dressing, though. No. We don't window window dressing. Everything uh, let, is me, let me Everything let me let me clean like... up a, a comment I, I put on my site a couple of days ago about Tepco, and since we're on the air, I'll clean it up a little bit. Temco could not find his collective butt with both hands or pour urine out of a boot with a toe cut off and directions printed on the bottom. And, I mean, yeah. it's that bad. <laughs> well, what we have is we have people yeah, that have uh, lobotomized lab accountants running TEPCO. And they say, no money, no money. Uh, don't worry about if it sterilizes your wife or makes your nose fall off or makes you end up dying of leukemia a year later and your hair fall off and your blood bleed from every orifice. You know, the Japanese are devastated by this, and they're in a state of radiation denial now. It's really very scary. Very smart, wonderful people are being destroyed by this, and we, our brothers and sisters in Japan, are suffering. Plus, we're in the tailpipe of this damn thing, and if it blows, here's what's going to happen. Have you ever heard of a thing called a hydrovolcanic super explosion? And it's very near Mount Fuji, which is also revealing the magma chamber. We could literally have, and there's been ancient prophecies in Japan, that Japan will disappear under the seas with a giant explosion. Now, if this blows, it could create a tsunami that could be half a mile high. And that tsunami could cross right over the Pacific Ocean and hit California, Oregon, Washington State, Canada, the Vancouver Island, the Queen Charlotte Islands, all the way down to South America to Chile. And people say, oh, no, that can't happen. And yes, it damn well can. 
and not only that, a good chunk of Japan could disappear. Let me you just understand. This is very people. real. This is a very real disaster. This is this, and, and it could trigger off super volcano explosions like Fuji. Fuji is not just a normal volcano. This is a volcano that every 150 years devastates and destroys everything within about 150 to 200 miles. When yeah, it but blows, it hasn't been active since the 1700s. So, na- but now yeah, it is. It's due. It's due. It's it's actually no, it's past due that it's going to blow. And when it blew last time. That's why the Japanese have all this mythology about the dragon and about Fuji and stuff. If you talk to Japanese about Fuji, they, you know, they shudder. They know that this sucker, when it decides to blow, Mount Fuji blows. And it turns out that the fault lines run directly from Fukushima Daiichi, right across uh, northern Honshu, directly to the magma chambers of Mount Fuji that's refilling. You're talking about the collapse of the fishing industry too. I mean, right, well, that's why they're going over to the. Also, these, mean, that's why they're going over to Korea to steal the fish from the Koreans I, I won't and challenge their the islands. I'm talking Ocean. about ones. I'm talking about yeah. ones even even on the Alaskan shore too. I mean, yeah, well, yeah, exactly. Everything is affected. And as well, well, I, I have right. a friend that, only... that lives up there, and and you know, she talks about the great uh, salmon, uh, you know, that they eat and they catch and they they grill it, and how so good it is. And I almost said, yeah, right. It you know, it glows in the dark. Well, the, anyway, the as I tell you, just uh, what I do is I'll take with my radiation detector out and just put it near it. If it goes click, 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 back away from the fish counter. <laughs> Back out. By the way, the, by the way, the, the South Koreans are real smart. They actually have radiation detectors at every fish counter in South Korea. So if you go to Seoul, they do. The, the, the Koreans are actually smart enough and decent enough to each other. They will show to you we've got clean fish here. Take the radiation detector, put it near the fish, and the fish don't go click click click. You can put it in your basket and take it home. Okay. Here in America, they won't tell the congressman. They, they probably you arrest my you calls. here if you tried that. Yeah, in here, and by the way, when I talked, I got great disrespect from the so-called nuclear expert under Senator Feinstein, who was a young idiot, who I asked him specific questions. I was a member of the nuclear division of ACOM for years, and I asked him experts, the so-called expert, what they were doing. They said, well, our radiation detector centers are working great. They're gamma, the, what's called the, the beta radiation centers. And I said, well, they disassembled and never was put back up. One of the ones that went the highest count, over 500 counts per minute up in Boise, Idaho, they're basically dissembling centers. They're in the mountains where the jet stream pulls down radiation and they get super high readings. They actually turn them off. And they don't replace the equipment either. So I said, your real problem is you don't have what's called plume data for live plumes, which you can put in the aircraft and have real-time you know, Wi-Fi connection. So you know that the, uh, the, the specific pattern or the flight path of the aircraft and exactly can do real-time analysis of where the plumes are and the radiation levels. We can do air sampling and look at the radiation profile of which isotopes are present in that plume because most of the time, by the way, when these things get airborne, they're going to get up 10, 20, 30,000 feet, probably between 20 and 30,000 feet, and those plumes might only be two or three miles wide. And they're a long finger of radiation shooting across the Pacific Ocean and across North America. And they're ephemeral. They come and go, and unless we know have data, we have no idea what's actually up there. So someone could be flying through it, and all of a sudden the air is sucking into the aircraft, and you can get a massive surge. I brought my detector when I flew up to Oregon last fall, and boy, my eyes popped out of my head. My wife looked at me and said, what are you looking at, Bill? I said, my radiation detector went crazy, just as we were flying into Portland, Oregon. Well, folks, get right with God. He loves us all, and we're in very data, interesting we, times. We, so no Chinese curse. May you live in interesting times, and I think we're in the most yeah. interesting. Well, if we can ask better questions, but we are being stymied by our so-called politicians who want to silence us and say, Deagle, shut the hell up. Don't ask any more questions. Don't do it.